four dimensional. Yes. What I can see being practiced at looking at pictures three is something three dimensional. Yes, that's because it's a Go projection. On it's a 3D projection. Sorry, I probably should have mentioned that. It's a 3D projection of a 4D shape. Uh, so they chop out all of the dimensions and they uh, put it into 3D. So it's a projection. You called it a Julia set, didn't you? If it's a Julia set, then it could be just a single. Um, then it's a single point of that shape. Yeah. It's a. It's. A, I think. I'm not sure if you. Um, yeah. Yeah. But that, that's what. That's what's happened. It's. It's been cut down from 4D to 3D. Otherwise, obviously, we can't see in 4D, not easily. <laughs> it's some, uh, but yeah, what you want to call it time, fourth dimension, but no, it absolutely it's, 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 it's the, 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 the fractal dimension of this object considered as a 4D, uh, like a subset of 4 space. Is it known? Um, because it may be, even though we can't see it, it's actually truly 4D. Um, uh, some fractal. have. I, I was reading recently how. Some say because we can't see 4D, maybe it's maybe it's got exquisite detail. If we could see 4D, mm. uh, no, basically, uh, it's it's been fairly well uh, from what someone who I know is very who, who kind of studies all that kind of thing. He said that uh, because of something to do um, with it's not uh, a conformal mapping, and because of that, uh, the you have shapes which tra translate and move and they don't actually stay in proportion and keep their respective angles so that's because of that uh, it's not what you uh, it's, it hasn't got that lovely detail so i'll be talking about that a bit more later on but uh, <coughs> So how many of you uh, recognise this? this thing? Just one more. Any, any of you recognise this shape? Okay. Uh, this is up until the uh, point where I've found the formula for the 3D mandible. This was the closest that I've, uh, that I've ever seen to a 3D mandible. It looks as though it contains a lot of the detail that you'd expect uh, in the 3D mandible. Um, and uh, it's, it was actually created by two doctors in Japan. I apologise again if I pronounced these wrong, but uh, Dr. Kazushi Yohara and Dr. Yoshiaka Araki. Uh, and it's what they call a quasi-fusion fractal. I probably Fusion, fusion, again, that's tricky to pronounce, uh, but that's what they created. Very rare fact, not many probably will have seen. How many of you have seen this? Do you think? Uh, anyone? Anyone? Okay, well, it's the closest I've found to it. It's good, it's very good. However, if you were to uh, zoom into that, you wouldn't have all the variety of the 2D mandel bra. It looks very much like as though it could be a 3D mandel bra, but it isn't. It's uh, based on IFS, an IFS principle where you, you keep it's, it's, which is known as an iterated function system, where you take a shape, you know the simple fractals we were looking at earlier, the 2D shapes, where you, uh, the Sapinski triangle, where you put a triangle inside another triangle, that's kind of, uh, you can be generated through this kind of iterated approach, where you create a triangle and then you put more triangles. This is based on the same principle, and it's, um, it's a very advanced, it's a lovely shape, um, but it's not what I was looking for. So, um, just, just to recap, um, we've looked at different ways that we can try and create the 3D mandel block. One way is spinning it around, another way is a Cortoni approach. Uh, of course, you can create mandel block mountains. Some, many people have created sort of mountains and coloured it according, put the height according to the iteration number, that kind of thing. Uh, none of them had this 
exquisite detail, which I was looking for, and probably others, or definitely others. Uh, and we take a look at this document. This um, was created um, by Marco Venendu. Uh, Slightly difficult to pronounce that. It, you can see how, uh, if we just, I'll just quickly read some of this. You surely know the wonderful fractal structure generated by calculating the equation z equals z times z plus c. I was in search of a three dimensional representation of the structure. What I found was the 3D projection of the TV plane, which looked like a Mandelbrot mountain, uh, which was not really interesting for me. The 3D, 4D transformation of this equation called Quartonians were too abstract for me and have no similarity with the original M set. So he was looking for a way to uh, ask, ask the world, uh, so this is someone else who was looking for it, see if there's, you know, if there's a way to do this. Um, um, for quite some time, for many moments, I uh, tried to look everywhere. I mean, there wasn't much luck, but he drew it here. He, this is, um, he gave an artist's impression of the shape, yeah, which you can, uh, if maybe it could look like that, who knows, who knows, uh, if we were to find the real one, let's move on, and then in late November in 2007, sorry, late 2007 in November, I published a formula on fractalforums.com, how many of you have heard of fractal forums, uh, one, one or two there, and uh, it's basically where, um, People can, uh, so it's the biggest site on fractals in the world, and people can su submit their pictures there, their art there, um, their formulas, their ideas, and a thriving community of so many different people from all over the world. Um, but anyway, going back to the original point, in late November, I mean late 2007, I published the formula here, but, and I also created an article about it. Maybe some of you will have seen this as well. Uh, this was this is not just that, it scrolls down. Um, uh, it's again, it's a hunt for the, the, the real freely Mandelbrot. Um, and the formula that I showed you on the previous page uh, creates this, essentially. And it was, I was it looks interesting. Uh, this, by the way, was made by Thomas Ludwig. Um, and uh, it's a very nice uh, globally illuminated render that he did there. Um, so uh, thanks to him for that. But then also, and here's another one also created by Tim Slippery. A nice metallic render. It's really nice, but I was thinking, um, I was thinking at the time, how can uh, it's, it still hasn't got that lovely detail out on it? So let's move on. Uh, here's a rendering I also did of the same shape. Um, it's, and it, it's actually um, it's the quadratic version, and I was a bit disappointed at the time. I thought my formula, oh, it's get, it might work, you know, I was a bit naive, maybe or maybe not. And uh, so I I, rend I rendered the shape, and it was disappointing. So, but if I had actually looked around the side, I would, might have had a surprise because this is what I would have seen. Okay, this is that same, very same object, but now uh, that you can see up there, we just flipped it uh, horizontally, and you can see the square there is actually this, this picture here. So if, I would have, if we would have looked more closely, this is what I would have found. And already we can begin to see this kind of intricate sort of fractal detail, and it's three dimensional, sort of caves and side caves. I'm just looking, if I just, whoops, whoa, whoa. let's go back again. Good time I got to the start of the presentation, we'll just quickly um, flip through these, probably a quicker way. So where did you get up see? Just just one moment, sorry. Uh, it would appear. Oh, 
There we are. Okay. Good. So we just um, go back to the uh, first R then. Oh. I'm going to get confused with it, but I should be here instead. Let's go back to where we were. Sorry about that. And uh, so if we uh, read behind, behind, we see, of course, all this detail. And then uh, someone called Paul Nylander from America, a uh, mathematician and programmer, he actually extended the formula that I showed you a few pages ago. And he um, did a very simple extension. You can even do it to the 2D number problem. He put it to the power of, uh, that could be 8 there, or 6 or 7 or 8. Um, and it created this, this is the first time that any, this is, the, this is a fractalforums.com, that website I was talking about before. Uh, this is the first time that anyone saw the shape. Anyone saw this basic shape. And um, sort of only low resolution here, uh, but you can already sort of recognise that, that familiar shape that I, I, you know, this whole presentation is about. So, uh, moving on. That's a normal 2D Mandelbrot. This is uh, Mandelbrot put to the power, I think that's a 4. Correct me if I'm wrong. This is quadratic or squared. This is to the power of 4. And it's to the power of 4. Is this the, the function that's iterating, is it? Not the iteration. It's, you know the formula z equals uh, z squared plus c. Yeah. Okay. Instead of squaring, you put it to the power of 4. So well, 3. So yes, it does look like three, but then this looks like yeah. one. It's quadratic. It's, uh, it's power two. Uh, it's a quadratic. So uh, I think you have to minus one. It's. I'm not 100 percent sure. I think if you have a quadratic, if you have power three, you'll have this on that side as well. But I, I'm pretty sure that's power four. So uh, in the similar way that you can put the normal two D mapping block to a higher power. Paul Nylander, his uh, discovery was to just put it to a higher power for the, the that chaotic, you know, that chaotic shape that you saw before, which looks very strange. Well, you put it to the higher power, and you get all this incredible detail. I'm just going to zoom into that, and you can bet that it goes on forever. You can zoom into that, and it will go on forever, um, uh, restricted only by the resolution of the image, obviously. But in theory, you can zoom into any part of this shape and you will always get exquisite detail, no matter how far you zoom in. So this, at the time, this must have taken me about two weeks to render. But now I've improved the formula, and not from the efficiency of the program, and now I can render it in more like a day or two. So it still takes a long time to render. It will be a long time before I think we see uh, this in uh, real time, so you can find it. Although some have been back. Sorry, go on. Uh, tell me if this is irrelevant or completely wrong. The different colours. I need to do the rate of convergence of the sequence z squared plus okay. c. Okay. Yeah, yeah, colour yeah. uh, rate of convergence. Uh, right. Can be different colours. Is that a rough idea? Uh, you, what you mean the colours you can yeah. see here? Yeah. Well, in general, in this the whole process of mapping uh, a full right. time z yeah. plus z yeah. squared yeah. plus. You know what I was saying about being inside the 2D number and you would only see a wall? Well, that wall would only be one colour. So what you're seeing here is only one colour. You can take information packed from the... Uh, there's quite a few ways you can change the colour of the shape, but by default, any iteration, this will go for the 2D number plot as well, uh, will only be one colour. It will just be... Um, you, you know, you have all those uh, lovely uh, 